All right, I'm gonna try to record this Fazanadu speedrun tutorial a little more streamlined this time, a little less rambling, a little more focused. I'll try to split it into five parts so that they'll be easy to digest videos on YouTube, hopefully. So I'm gonna hit start. Um, I'm playing on emulator this time on a DualShock 3. I've got an input display in the bottom left corner there. So very first thing I have to talk about is intro skip. So there's this little dialog box. Oh, I didn't quite jump over it here. Um, if I turned on a hitbox viewer, you'd be able to see it, but it's kind of like here. Like, see this uh, this thing in the background that's not red? It's it's lined up with this. You gotta jump over this rectangle that's about here. So the way I like to do that, well, there's this mechanic called walk speed that I'll talk about a little bit. So what I usually do is I jump left, and then I jump like right around here. See how there's this like, I kind of imagine a straight line going off the edge of this destroyed wall in the background. And I want that straight line to be connected to the Fazana dude's back. That's like, that's kind of how I visually line it up. Okay, so I jumped too early there. If you get this like kind of cross-up dive kick that hits like the back corner there. If you jump too late, well, you're just gonna walk into the front of it. So the, the sad thing is, uh, that intro cutscene is 11.3 seconds long, and this intro skip saves about 12 seconds. So if you miss it in a race, it's not worth resetting to try to get... Wow, I've been pretty accurate with this on console lately. There we go. So that's what it looks like when you get it. The very first thing we're gonna do here, though, is we want to get killed by this guy, because we'll respawn with full health and magic. However, I'm just gonna briefly mention one thing, though. Oh, I'm just gonna do intro skip again. Oh, got it, even with a bit of CPU lag. So, if I hold the A button, this guy goes left. And that means I get my death warp a little bit sooner. However, because I want this to be a beginner-friendly tutorial, I'm not gonna do any of this A button manipulation. There's actually very little RNG in this game, but what little there is we can influence. It's mostly these hopping enemies here. You can influence what they do by holding the A button on their odd number jumps. Basically their odd number jumps, they have to decide which way they're gonna go. On the even number jumps, they just go the same way they've been going. Or maybe they go towards the player. Either way, the, the even number jumps you can't mess with. It's only the odd number jumps. So anyway, you have to talk to the guru. He gives you this ring of elf. Uh, which you need to go into the, the king's door. If you don't have the ring, you get this cheeky Do you need a ring to open a door? Text box. So we're gonna talk to the king with zero gold. And the game says if you talk to the king while you have zero gold, you get this long dialogue and the king will give you 1500 gold. So you could spend exactly 1500 and come back and get another 1500. And that was like the beginner route for a long time, but uh, the One King route, I think, has gotten easy enough and accessible enough that I think this is the way forward. This, you can, you can get a sub-30 time now pretty easily with uh, the stuff I show you in this tutorial. In fact, I did a run using only these strats, like none of my fancy, like, wing boot pausing stuff or ladder re-jumping or A-button manipulation. Didn't do any of that, and I got a... Uh, a sub-28 time. I think it would have been 4th uh, or 5th on the leaderboard, actually. Anyway, we're gonna take our 1500 here. We're gonna buy a hand dagger. That'll be our uh, weapon that we get for pressing pressing the B button to attack. We're gonna get the deluge. Press up B to shoot magic. You can have one deluge on screen at a time. And your magic meter has 80 MP on it. Deluge costs 2. So you can fire deluge 40 times before you die. Now we're gonna buy an elixir. This is an item that'll, uh, if you would die, instead the elixir will be consumed and you'll fully restore your health and magic, but if that happens, uh, the run is basically over. Because we need to have an elixir in inventory to, uh, get one of the springs flowing, uh, a bit later. So, easiest place to get an elixir is that shop at the start of the game. If you really want to do the Two King route, you just buy a red potion and sell it. Because it sells for 160, or you buy it for 160 and then you sell it for 80. So I'm going to claw my controller here uh, to get a 
my stuff equipped, like a pro. Alright, what am I gonna do there? I have input display on, so... This is, uh, this was called a Shiner Strike half a lifetime ago for me, and people still call it that for some reason. Um, so like I said, you can press B to stab, you can press up B for deluge. So when you press up B, you know, you're also attacking with your dagger. Uh, your dagger does 5 damage and your deluge does 6, and these hopping guys have 11 HP. So if I didn't do that... You know, it takes quite a while. The other reason why it takes a while here... Oh yeah, I didn't talk about the walk speed mechanic. So, notice how... You know, this is me going at full speed. And if I let go of a direction, I gotta build up my speed again. So this is called walk speed, or run speed, I guess. Most people call it walk speed, or momentum. Uh, you can lose walk speed a bunch of different ways. Main one is attacking on the ground. You lose your, your walk speed, your momentum. But, I can attack in the air. As long as, uh, I don't let go of my direction. This game also has fixed jump arcs, by the way. So, like, see how I can, like, let the controller go neutral while I'm in the air, and I won't lose my walk speed? Oh, okay. Um, you also lose your walk speed if you get hit, or your dagger hits an enemy. So, you can see it. I'm, like, hitting that guy from far away, and I'm losing my walk speed. So, easiest way, though, just go like that. It might be slightly faster, though. Just two deluges? Well, not really, because you still have to walk past the door to get your coin. And also, when uh, we go through this door, we lose our walk speed anyway, because it loads a, a new tile set. We're going to do two deluges for this guy, though, so we can keep our walk speed into this screen. Shiner Strike here, you can wait for this guy if you want. But, uh, actually, I'm not going to. I planned this out earlier. Planned out the budget. <laughs> and again, we're not doing any A manipulations, like holding A as the screen is scrolling. Because the game will notice, like, oh, the A button was held on, on like, the frame when I have to decide what these hopping guys are going to do. Not doing any of those manipulations. Oh, you can wiggle a little more there to get a damage boost forward. Damage boosting is uh, not that common in this game. In fact, if you have full walk speed and you get damage boosted forward... Oh, I made a slight mistake already. So, we're just going to review all this stuff. So, do a Shiner Strike for this guy. Do two Deluges for this guy. Not a big deal if you want to do a Shiner Strike instead to save one Deluge. Okay, let's try recording a save state coming into here. Wiggle a little more. There we go. That's what it looks like. But yeah, because I connected with my dagger, I lost my walk speed, so taking the damage boost forward does speed me up. So here, I want to let this guy hop to the right one more time. Because it makes these cyclope guys uh, walk to the left so you can easily jump over them. I can't demonstrate now. There, by holding the A button to change up what they do. If they go to the right, you'll get uh, damage boosted forward like that, but we don't want to lose the health. I mean, it's not a, not a big deal if you do, but... Anyway, this is the town of Appaloon, and we're just gonna walk right through it. We don't need anything from here. The screen outside, though, is kind of annoying. Um, for this route, I recommend just jumping over that guy. Uh, it takes three deluges to get him out of the way. And if you want to... You want to wait. Well, if you're not doing A button manipulation, it takes a long time for that guy to come down. So I think easiest easiest overall strat, just jump over. Then here, <laughs> you can do two quick shots. I'll make another save state here. We can also do that. Okay. So I pressed the B button twice there to fire two deluges. Okay, let's let's do it in slow motion. <laughs> oh. uh, this one... Okay, this one... Oh yeah, you can buffer in this game, by the way. Like, if, I, if I'm holding all these buttons and I load the state, the very first frame I'm actionable, once the screen finishes scrolling, I'm gonna 
uh, jump and fire deluge and attack. But that made that guy jump the other way because, you know, A button was held. A button manipulation. And I'm trying to stay away from that in this tutorial. Because um, I feel like uh, us top runners seem to be changing it all the time. Like, a, <laughs> if we come up with, like, a little tutorial video, it would be like, All right, here it is, the ultimate manipulation. Well, it's going to change a week later. Well, okay, <laughs> this game doesn't move that fast, but um, it always feels like there's improvements to be made. And I think it's kind of fun to try to discover it on your own. Uh, again, it's like a, a big subject. I'd rather make that a separate video. I'm just trying to make a more beginner-friendly tutorial here. Might just go like that. A lot of ways you can deal with this guy. Oh, and you want your you want to equip your jack key. I like to equip my jack key while I'm in the air. Ooh. Oh yeah, you can also do uh, a shiner strike on the ground, kind of. For that though, you gotta press B twice. And like I said, you can have one deluge on screen at once, but see how you can fire a deluge like in the later frames of your attack, like in the follow through. So you won't start a new attack animation. That's kind of what you have to do on the ground. If you just press out B, your deluge is going to hit the guy first and push him away from your dagger. So you have to press B twice like that. And there we go, there's the result I want. Uh, just to demonstrate this again. And this is uh, what I call a falling shiner strike. Again, I'm pressing B twice in the air. Because again, I have to hit with my dagger first and the deluge after. I just try to Oh wait, that works too, apparently. Huh. Oh, not that time. I must have had really good space here for it. Pressing B once doesn't quite work. So I'm pressing like B then up B is what I mean. Yeah. Alright. This guy, it's not a big deal if you use two deluges. So what we're gonna do is re-enter that screen uh, four times. On our fourth visit, there's going to be a, a secret item once we defeat all the enemies. So this screen, these guys can either go left or right, and I've just shown both of the strats you want to do. Uh, the left way is slower, uh, costs you one deluge. This way is faster, but it costs you health. And uh, it turns out having health is what saves time for the, the grind we're gonna do at the next town. So if you want to dig into A button manipulations, you want to try to find the route that gives you uh, all three of them going to your right like that. And then, yeah, for this screen... I'm gonna do this screen again just to um, show strats for it. So again, this is neutral B, then up B, like grounded shiner strike. And then you gotta kill the spike while it's falling down the ladder. Uh, you can't hit them with your dagger. So what I do is like you want to shoot when it's like about on this column, because like it's gonna fall onto your deluge and it's gonna get pushed forward onto your outstretched dagger on the way down. So like it's okay to it's okay to hit it early. Like you want to hit it earlier than you think usually. Oh, there I missed it. But if you do, just shoot it again. It's not a big deal. Then this thing. Um, the easy thing to do is just shoot it twice from over here. But what you can do, the timing might work out so that you just end up on the lip and you can shoot it twice really quickly. Or, what can also happen... Oh, I get to fall into my dagger. You also have to get this coin. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna mention that. You have to get this coin before you climb up. Like, say for some reason that guy hops to the right and you're like, oh, I'll just like shoot him twice and come get the coin later. Bread will stay on the screen, but look, the coin's already gone. Money disappears in this game. It's so backwards! Like, normally, you know, currency is currency because it's metal and it doesn't decay in the way organic things like bread do. That's why coins are currency instead of bread. Oh, I got it wrong. So, like, trying to set this up. There you go. Sometimes you'll get damage boosted to the right. A little bit risky, though. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, yeah, you can either do a uh, Shiner Strike like that, or two Deluges to keep your walk speed going. Oops, I'm gonna put the And then 
you're coming out of here. Oop. There, I got hit. Here, let's go with two shots, just to prove that, uh... Oh. Right, so I'm doing this the hard way. Um, because if you press up B on the ground, you're gonna press up on the door and get hit with this dialogue box. Which you can skip, by the way. Like, you can press B to, to remove it. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Wow, I've screwed it up every time. Good tutorial, Shiner. There you go. That's the hard way to do it, though. So here's the other thing. If you face right when you're uh, exiting out, then you'll be facing right when you pop out. Let's just show a couple different strats. Other thing, you might be on a different RNG path, or you can hold A and just make that guy go right. Actually, here's another uh, nice strat you can do if you make that guy go right. Just walk into him, and then while you're invincible, do three stabs. Anyway, we're staying away from A button manipulation, though. Oh yeah, you also have time to turn around once you go outside. Just make sure you neutral jump. Or if you're gonna forward jump, you know, you better have good timing. I guess this is also where I talk about the way doors work. Um, so if you're on, like, the left side of the sprite, see how I've, like, appeared... Well, I guess in the center. But if I go out on the right side... I don't know. This one, it doesn't matter as much. This one just seems to be centered. Hmm. There's some doors where uh, you'll appear on the left or right side. Like, one column shifted to the left or right. But I guess this one you just always appear in the middle. Anyway, we gotta equip our Matic here. And you press down B to use your items. This screen is called Fight Club. And there's a lot of different ways it can go. This screen itself is, like, the main reason to look into A button manipulation, is to try to have a fight club that goes nicely. So, uh, I'm gonna try holding A, just to show, yeah, this is the other thing that can happen, is, like, they'll both be in the basement. I like to, like, prime one or two of them with, like, one hit before I go over. You can hold A while climbing down the ladder for manipulation as well. Oh, that was a really bad fight club. Nice. If you're really good at climbing up here, um, and this guy goes, I think it's uh, left, 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 or yeah, left, left, right, left, right. Basically, you can climb so that your head will bonk into his arm. Actually, I'll see if I can set that up with like well timed A button. Right now. Oops. Oh, I'm not gonna get it now. You have to, you have to have full walk speed going in. Another thing you can do is what I call the flying matter. You know how I said, uh... Oh yeah, what am I even doing there? So when you get hit, you get pushed left or right, but because there's this brick here, I'm getting pushed into it. And I'm also going into a standing state. But you can still, like, stand on the ladder, though. So, uh, you can, you can jump, like, one character height. So look at that, I've been hit! <laughs> and I got jumped and damage boosted again. Oops. Oh, and that's, that's the minute I wanted too. So yeah, see how like I can jump but I don't fall down the ladder? This is just kind of my new standing height. But as soon as I press up or down, I'm stuck in this ladder animation again. You can see on the input display I'm mashing A, but I'm stuck being a, a ladder climber. Okay, I don't know if I can set this up because... I don't know why I'm showing off, like, the super hard strat that I, like, got in my world record run. Nope, holding A... It's not cutting it. Oh, maybe that's it. Like, maybe me pressing A to grab the ladder is 
doing the manip. So like, what if I... There we go. Oh, wow, I can actually do it in this timeline. Cool. I'm not saying you have to go for this, I'm just showing this is like a possibility. There we go. Uh, and if I, if I have like really good, really good timing. I guess I'll go, I did, kind of didn't explain what the flying Matic was. Remember how I said you can do uh, deluges with like uh, the follow through of your swing? This is kind of the same thing where we're gonna press B in the air, but gonna press down B on the ground in like the later frames of the attack animation. So that instead of being like, oh, uh, like, I've used Matic, he's like winding up at the very beginning of the animation. Instead, there we go. Means I can get on the ladder a few frames sooner, and I can jump out like that, and I can, you know, get owned in the basement of Fight Club. <laughs> you know, normally I would fight that guy up top. Although, well, maybe I'll just take damage boost to go across the top, but maybe not, because that, that costs some health. And I was saying how having extra health when we're doing the grind of the next town uh, can save some time. I usually, I actually don't like going for Flying Matic because, you know, I have a pretty good setup here. You know, I don't want to be a few frames ahead, I want it to always be exactly the same. Anyway, so there can be some variants in Fight Club, but apparently, you know, we're getting exactly this Fight Club because I didn't do any A button manipulations, so yours is gonna be the same. If you're holding the A button when you're going up there, then yeah, I guess that guy will get st stuck in the corner. There we go. You can even see where I held the A button, you can mimic my A presses. Oh, this screen. So you can save some time on this screen with a, a ladder reset I was talking about earlier. Oh, I saved my state instead of... I wanted to load it, actually. <laughs> if you go backwards, you get hit there. I didn't know that. Okay. So yeah, that's like a falling shiner strike. You can see I press B, then up B while I'm falling. You want to get this thing taken down uh, earlier rather than later. Why here. So like let's say I just do a rising shiner strike from like there and I gotta climb, I got knocked off. Uh, whereas it seems to work out better if you like spend your walk speed early. You know what I mean? There we go. Um I think you can make it even easier if you just use two deluges. Let's check. Oh, Right, me pressing, I buffered like an A press, and that meant like I RNG manip that guy to jump the other way. There we go. Oh, but then the coin is kind of under the ladder. <laughs> Maybe if I just jump for the ladder, I can still grab the coin with my feet. There we go. Oh, nice, you can climb even higher. Costs an extra deluge though. However,. What if, for some reason, you got bad luck or something funny happened in Fight Club? I'm gonna hold A to make this guy jump right. Well, if you do a grounded China strike, you can still do it. It's just a bit tougher. And if you don't get it... <laughs> like, let's... I don't know. Let me come up with something really contrived. Oops. Okay, yeah, you fell off the ladder. You'll have to get that guy out of the way. Anyway, let's load my state here. So you can take out that pizza head like that, or jump over it. And notice how like I buffered it, like just pressed uh, all the buttons on the way in. These pizza head guys react the same way every time. It's like, they walk slow, stop, walk slow, stop, walk fast, hop, and stop. So, I attack when it's gonna start walking again, and I'll get a nice clean double hit like that. And this guy, um, you can jump over this guy, but it's pixel perfect. That was early. Oh. The 
pixel I look at is like, see how like the tree in the background here, there's, is that one or two pixels? That's two pixels, then it's three pixels. Um, wow, I thought it was like one then two, but if we're actually counting, wait, is that one or two? Hmm. Oh, it's one. You can see there's like a black speck that's half the size. Okay, it's two then three. Right. So I'm always looking when like Fazana Dude's leg is like lined up with these three pixels. Like I don't go like past it. I don't really know like what frame of reference I'm using, but I just feel like it's you gotta be you jump like kind of when you're lined up with this this chunk, this second highest chunk off the ground. Oh, that was late. Late. That was early. Called it before <laughs> before the judgment even came out. That was late. See, this is pretty tough. So, I'm gonna show you the beginner strat. Just do three jumping deluges like that. Oops, and then I slipped off the ladder. It's not a big deal that you lost walk speed because you gotta get on this ladder anyway. Well, maybe it is. Because my fight with Ryu didn't really go very well. Oh, apparently that can happen too. Um, okay. Hmm. So I'm doing a deluge on the way up. There we go. Usually Ryu will go like that. <laughs> See, I call that... That guy specifically is Ryu. These, these white mage enemies are officially called Karons, but uh, I think a lot of people call them Pandas, too. Yeah. Slick tutorial. Ah! Can't decide what I want to hold up, apparently. I really can't decide. Oh. Might have been I paused on this screen at a weird time. I'm gonna leave. Ah, that is what happened. <laughs> hey, I did this tutorial on Flashcart last time, but I realized I wanted to do it on emulator anyway just for input display. Input display is way more important for a tutorial. I think the issue is that I climbed into the screen a little bit and then paused. I uh, did not mean to shoot a fourth one there. Yeah, this game looks like completely different. There we go, that which should look more like that. So yeah, fire a dealers as you jump over the fireball. You should get a double hit during the fight somewhere. There. Yeah, just don't be too afraid of Ryu there. One thing to watch out for though. Up the ladder too early. Yeah, exactly this. So when you go to press like A, B, and up to do your attack, there's this ladder underneath, and climbing the ladder is going to take priority. So don't shoot a deluge if you're taking your jump here. And this happened because I grabbed the ladder like, you know, the bottom rung with my head. Like I was way far down on the ladder. Okay, let's try this one more time. Got stuck a little bit. <laughs> oh, that was a low ladder grab. Yeah, these enemies have 27 HP, I'm pretty sure. So that's why two deluges and three attacks is ideal. There we go, that's what it should look like. So you can kill this ghost while it's in the pillar. I don't need to because I'm at full health. Alright, and here's the four paw grind. Here's the, the last thing we're gonna learn in part one. So Slackinator found this nice convenient way to farm these guys. You gotta keep doing this till we hit 2800 gold to buy wing boots at the tool shop. So I'm gonna explain it now that I've done it a few times. So you walk into this guy, 
He's gonna bonk you to the right. And then you wanna stand about here and just do your attack right before you're gonna get shot. So this will cause him to get pushed to the right. It takes six double hits to take them out, by the way. I didn't get the second double hit there, so I threw in one extra attack. It's a little tricky to see what's going on with these uh, foreground pillars here. But this guy is uh, walking to the right after you push him to the right. And this is why having extra health is good, because then you can skip like taking the ghost out to get your health back. So yeah. I guess I should like... I should just watch how these guys actually walk, walk, then shoot. Walk, walk, shoot. Walk, walk, shoot. start my grind over again, actually. I... <laughs> With some extra magic, too. Or maybe not. You can also just take this guy out outside before you go in. That's not, like, the best way to do it, though. to wait a little bit before going up. <laughs> that neutral jump is a good maneuver. I call that the bagel chop. Okay. So we're gonna start our four paw grind again. It's gonna be uh, 11 reps, I think. Or no, 12 reps. Right, and because I have full walk speed, I have to time it differently. So what I usually do Notice how, well you can't really see, but like, my dagger is sticking up here. You spawn in the air. You spawn like, here. So if you let go of the D-pad... Um... Oh there, I lost walk speed anyway, but... Like if you just, uh, let go of the D-pad while you're walking in, you might not lose your walk speed. You'll have to like, wait a little bit. And like, react. So it's more consistent if you like let go of the D-pad to give up your walk speed. If you you're gonna have full walk speed when you get here the first time, because you walked in from like you know all all the way from here, like all the way here, fell down. Like you had full walk speed like while you were falling down here, but you won't have full walk speed for each rep because you're gonna finish here, connect with your dagger, and you'll have no walk speed. So then go back out. Seems to work out well. Yeah, I don't I don't bother letting go like once I've started the reps, but that first rep where I just get to town, yeah, I'll usually um, I'll usually let go to reset my walk speed. And I'm gonna start spending health here. You wanna finish the grind with about half health. If you're getting the ghost each time, you net gain one HP each time. Yep, your your health is uh your health bar has 80 health on it. Okay. Oops. Okay, I better get some health for the last one. Okay. So we're done the grind. Usually I glance at my splits to see like when I'm walking into town, and if you're under seven minutes, you're doing great. So wing boots are at the bottom, you can press up to grab those. And another thing we're going to do in the town of Forpa, go in the church and talk to the guru. This will set our respawn point to here. <clears throat> but because we got over 1,000 experience, we got a new title. Aspirant. It's in the, you know, player screen here. So our next level up is at 2200. The only thing Aspirant does is when we respawn, we're gonna have 1,000 experience and 500 gold. So it's like a free, free 500 gold, um, just for coming back to life. So that'll do it for part one of the tutorial.